So in the last few examples, when we computed our interval of convergence, we ended up with some sort of finite uh, positive value for our radius, uh, and therefore we had to check the endpoints to get our entire interval. What I want to do now is a couple of examples where we're going to see that uh, that's not always what's going to happen. Sometimes you'll get a radius of zero, sometimes you'll get a radius that is infinite. Okay, so let's uh, work these out. The uh, first one, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move a little faster through these, so we'll write down our terms. In fact, I'm just going to write down bn plus 1. bn plus 1 is x to the n plus 1, n plus 1 to the n plus 1, all over n squared. And so when we compute our apply our ratio test, we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity of, uh, let's see, absolute value of x to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 to the n plus 1 all over n squared times the reciprocal, uh, oh, that should be an n plus 1 squared, so it'll be n squared on top, x to the n on the bottom, and n to the n down there. All right, uh, x to the n's, that'll cancel with n of the factors of x on top, and we'll be left with just an absolute value of x. And I can just pull that out, and you'll notice that what's left is just uh, things that have to do with n, and those are all positive. So we don't need absolute values anymore. So now we have uh, n plus 1 to the n plus 1, which I'm going to write as n plus 1 to the n times n plus 1, times n squared, all over n plus 1 squared, times n to the n. And at that point, I'm going to see that one factor of n plus 1 is going to cancel right there. And we will be left with absolute value of x times the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 I'm going to combine the terms that have n powers together. So we can write this n plus 1 over n to the n. And that's multiplied by n squared over n plus 1. Now, what is that going to approach? That looks like a little bit of a nasty limit. Well, let's try splitting it up into two pieces. So this limit in that first term is finite, right? Uh, it may not be obvious, but it turns out that that's actually a very uh, commonly encountered limit. Uh, it actually approaches E. So that's the limit as n goes to infinity of, uh, we can write that as 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n. And I'll post a YouTube video with the derivation for that, but you can show that that's actually just E. Multiply by the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over n plus 1. And that one is going to be infinity over infinity. But if we apply L'Hopital's rule, we will have limit as n goes to infinity of derivative of the top would be 2n, and derivative of the bottom would be 1. And so notice you'll get infinity. And so our ratio here uh, is going to be infinity times e times absolute value of x. Well, that's going to be infinite. <laughs> as long as x is not equal to 0. If x is equal to 0, on the other hand, then essentially we've just got 0 inside uh, for each of our terms. So we'd say that this diverges except when x equals 0. Right? The only way that we can get a ratio that is anything other than infinity is to have absolute value of x exactly equal to 0. And if you go back up to your original series, you would again see that, well, yes, you're just adding up 0 over and over and over again. And so here, the radius of convergence is 0. It only converges at the center point. It doesn't converge anywhere else. All right, let's try our second uh, problem. So here we've got x to the n, 2 to the n over n factorial. And so bn plus 1 would be equal to x to the n plus 1, 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And with factorials especially, I like to simplify. So let's pull out, first of all, an x 
and a 2. And we'll have x to the n, 2 to the n left on top. And then from the bottom, we have n plus 1 factorial. But that's the same thing as n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 and so on, which is just n factorial. OK? So when I take the limit as n goes to infinity, to compute my ratio, I'll have 2x times x to the n, 2 to the n, all over n plus 1 times n factorial, multiplied by the reciprocal of our terms, which is n factorial over x to the n, 2 to the n. And notice a whole bunch of things cancel. And we're going to be left with a uh, limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of 2x over n plus 1. Well, that numerator does not depend at all on x or on n. It's independent of the value of n. So as n grows, it stays the same size. But the denominator is growing. And so this is going to be some number over infinity. Well, that's just 0. And so notice that is always less than 1. What that means is this series always converges. It doesn't matter what value of x we choose. It's always going to converge. And so in this case, we would say that the radius of convergence is infinite. It converges everywhere. And by that, I mean for all x. OK, so we can have a uh, radius of convergence that is 0 if the series never converges. Uh, except at the center point, or we can have a radius of convergence that is infinite if it converges for all values of x. It doesn't matter what x you plug in.